Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. Welcome back to Climate Change Conversations. Today we're talking again with William Kay, author of our recent report, Post Paris, that looks at the geopolitical trade war behind the climate change catastrophe propaganda. William, the Alberta Climate Panel proposes 30% renewables, presumably mostly wind, on the grid here. What's behind that, in your opinion? They have these sort of, there was the German system, they designed it around 1990. Basically, if you build a wind turbine and you'll get government funding to do that, the grid operator has to buy your electricity in priority sequence. So you've got a, you've got a sure supply, uh, someone who's going to buy the stuff. The consumer has to pay more than the market rate for that electricity. So it's shooting fish in a barrel. Like shooting fish in at the barrel? You build this wind turbine, they got to buy the electricity, they got to pay you more than the market rate so that you can get your return back. A and your research indicates that beyond the ideology, beyond the climate catastrophe propaganda, there is substantial financial influence behind the worldwide push for renewables and the goals are astounding. The first, I would say, 15,000 turbines built in Germany were entirely financed by a, a German-owned bank. Uh, which I, I view as the lar world's largest environmental organization. It's called the German Bank of Reconstruction. They typically uh, invest at low interest loans about 20 billion a year into renewable energy. So people talk about Greenpeace and all these little uh, fringe things. There's, there's a deeper into the movement you find, you know, Siemens Electric and General Electric and Toyota. Those companies are very much involved in this and they are very much integrated into a government strategy. I mean, the plan is. Europe is going to be entirely electric vehicle in 25 years. To accomplish that, they estimate you know, over 100,000 fast chargers are going to have to be built. That's primarily going to be government money or these giant electrical companies buying into it, like the, the big French nuclear company. Uh, but that's a huge transition and it's a huge expenditure. Uh, you know, the, the $1.5 trillion a year climate industrial complex annual revenues, that is a legitimate number. That's probably what it is. When you're talking about uh, an industrial complex that is generating 1.5 trillion a year, that's a lot of clout. And these businesses are highly organized. You know, the World Council on Sustainable Business Development. Uh, there's only about 100 members, but they themselves oversee uh, several dozen national business associations. It's estimated that they have in their train 35,000 businesses that are part of the you know, climate industrial complex. Oh, that's uh, thousands of businesses are involved in this then. They must have many lobbyists as well. Late as 2009, it was estimated there was 2,500 paid lobbyists on behalf of the climate campaign in Washington, D.C. alone. These are primarily representing the wind uh, turbine industry, the solar farms, biofuels, which is you know, a crime against humanity that we're doing this. And what they want are those kinds of policies world over, like we're going to get in Alberta. So for wind in Alberta, how do you see it? Where if you build a wind turbine, we're pretty well going to guarantee the profitability of that turbine. William, thank you for these insights. We'll be talking with you more about the geopolitics of climate change in our next Climate Conversation. Join us next time. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.